Suddenly, it's June, and the year is halfway gone. As you reflect on your New Year's resolutions, you might notice you're not as far along as you hoped. But here's the great news, it's never too late to make a change. In this video, I'll share how you can transform your life in just 6 months. Right now, you can see today's chapters, all the things we'll be talking about. And at the end of the video, I'll give you homework so that you can start taking real steps and making real changes to transform your life in just 6 months. Let's begin with the self-discrepancy theory. Imagine you have 3 pictures of yourself. One picture shows you as you are right now. This is your actual self. The second picture shows you as you should be, like a version that follows all the rules and does everything you're supposed to. This is your odd self. And the third picture shows you as you wish to be, like a superhero version of you with all the things you dream about. This is your ideal self. Let's take getting an education to land a dream job and achieve financial freedom as an example. Your actual self might be learning and growing but maybe you're not in your dream job yet and you might not have all the money you want. Your odd self is like the version of you that your parents, teachers, and other people might want you to be. They might want you to work hard at school and get a good education so you can have a job that makes you happy and helps you make enough money to take care of yourself. Your ideal self is when you imagine yourself with a college degree, working in your dream job and enjoying financial stability and freedom. This version of you is successful, fulfilled, and living life to the fullest. So you might want to go to school and study really hard like your odd self wants so you can get a job that you love like your ideal self dreams about and have enough money to do fun things and take care of yourself which is something your actual self needs. When these three pictures look very different from each other, it can make you feel unhappy or uncomfortable because it creates self-discrepancies that predict your level of self-esteem. But it's completely natural for you to have all of these differences and notice them because this way you can make a plan to change things so that your actual self starts to look more like your ideal and odd selves. This way you can become the best version of you and feel happier and more like a superhero in real life. But here a very important part that I want to add from myself is that I think it is also important to accept where you are right now. Accept your actual self. Because if you can only be truly happy once you achieve something, your ideal self, are you then truly happy? You know what I mean? Accepting the fact that you don't have a perfect job or that you're not in your dream relationship right now makes the whole process of acquiring those things more smooth. Because you're no longer running away from something, running away from the version of you that you will no longer wish to be. Instead, you're arriving at a place where you wish to be. And for me, this approach works in a more sustainable way because it doesn't make me think like, oh my god, my actual self is so far away from my ideal self self. Like, I hate it. I feel so sad and anxious about it. And that's exactly something that determines your level of self-esteem. Because if you see this huge gap in between your actual self and your ideal self, sometimes this gap might look too intimidating for you to actually start doing something to change your life and take on new challenges. So now, of course, because of that, we absolutely have to talk about your self-esteem and how to improve it. So look, one thing I highly recommend you work on during the next six months is your self-esteem because it's honestly a work in progress and as you have just learned, it can help you reach your ideal self faster. Why is it important to work on your self-esteem? Because your self-esteem creates expectations about what you're capable to achieve. And these expectations influence your behavior and they create your reality. For example, when I started my YouTube channel, if I did not believe in myself that I could do it, that I could grow an audience and become a content creator, I wouldn't have done it. I had to work on my self-esteem a lot and then eventually it helped me start moving in the direction of my ideal self. Let's say if you believe that you're capable of landing your dream job, you will reach your ideal self. 
If you're not so sure, it will cause a lot of anxiety and stress and you will be a lot less likely to take the right action to work on your resume, for example, go to interviews and actually get that dream job. When I read the book, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem by Nathaniel Brandon, there were a few key takeaways that I really want to share with you today. These exercises were the sentence completion exercise and the living consciously exercise. When we talk about the first one on the author's website, you can find a lot of different different journaling and self-reflection prompts. You basically have to complete the sentence with your own words. It's pretty simple, especially if you already have this habit of journaling consistently including this practice into your journaling routine will help you a lot. I'm going to mention some of my favorite ones from his website. If I boost my energy level by 5% today, <laughs> and then you have to continue the sentence. If I bring 5% more awareness to my insecurities, something will happen. If I'm more accepting of my body, something will happen. I really like these journaling prompts because you can honestly choose new ones every single day. And this way, reflect and analyze and start building your awareness. And becoming more aware of what you want and who you are will help you so much. It will help you achieve your dreams, get to your ideal self and feel more at peace while doing all of that. While doing the journaling prompts, you might experience this feeling like you don't actually believe everything you're writing. And that's why you should try the living consciously exercise. It is all about challenging your automatic thoughts and assumptions, especially those that are negative or self-critical. So what you can do is take a piece of paper and write down a list of all your negative thoughts and challenge them with positive thoughts. Let's say your negative thought goes something like this. I'm too scared to try. I'm too scared to try to start a YouTube channel. I'm too scared to try to go to this interview. And then you have to reframe it in a positive way. It's natural to feel fear, but I can take small steps to overcome it and build my confidence. An additional thing you can do here is when you write down all of those negative beliefs, thinking about whose voice is saying that to you. Oftentimes it's someone in our lives who said that to us at one point, And that's why right now we don't believe in ourselves that much. If you're too afraid to start something new, maybe your parents would always tell you when you were a kid that, you know, it's too scary. Don't do that. Don't go in there. Just stay here. And because of that, you have this negative belief and it's very hard for you to let go of it. So if you do know whose voice is saying that to you, you can write down their name and then you can say thank you but I can make my own decisions this is not serving you and I will choose for myself and then when you finally decide to change your negative behavior you absolutely have to do it slowly because if you don't what will happen is that you would just come back to what you were doing before and this is how we move on to the next part of the video change your life in micro shifts if you jump too far out of your comfort zone it will shock you and you'll crawl right back to your old habits instead you should change in small steps steps. Let's say you want to start reading more, but every single time you think about picking up a book and reading it, you're just like, uh, I don't know, I don't really want to, I have to spend like an hour reading it. No, why an hour? Just read a page. This should be your goal. Make your goals as small as possible. If you want to read more, start by reading just one page. That's it. You don't have to finish an actual book just one page. And because it's easier to continue doing something when you already started, you will continue reading, most likely. But even if you don't, you will still achieve your goal of reading one page. And because it will make you feel accomplished, you will be more likely to actually start enjoying reading and read more the next day and the day after that. The book that taught me a lot of things about changing your life in micro shifts is The Mountain Is You by Brianna Wiest, and I can recommend it a lot. From the book, I learned that even these small changes changes will lead to some distress, but you can't truly transform until you become willing to do what makes you uncomfortable. When I try something new, like I go rock climbing or I try to form a habit of going to the gym, at the very beginning, it feels so uncomfortable and that's why a lot of people quit. But your discomfort will be manageable if you take it slowly and the changes you want will follow. Because if you don't continue and adapt yourself, you will just go back to your old habits. It is so freaking important that you learn to take action 
before you feel like doing it. So many people always say, you know what, I don't feel like doing it today, I don't feel like going to the gym today or cooking a healthy meal today. But if you always say that you don't feel like doing something, you will never actually get to your ideal self. You will never actually start taking action to get to the place where you want to be. Taking action builds momentum and creates motivation. There was this cool question that the author asked in the book. Would you rather have one million dollars in hand right now or a penny that doubles in value every day for the next month. Maybe for a lot of you watching this video, the $1 million right now sounds amazing. And you would be tempted to say, yeah, I'll take a million dollars right now. But if we really think about it, after 31 days, that one penny would be worth over 10 million dollars. This question is all about what you do every single day. Those little small habits that maybe a lot of people wouldn't even notice. Like when you make sure that you go to bed before, I don't know, 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. because you want to get a good night's sleep. Or when you make sure you drink enough water. Like if one day you just said that, okay, today's the day that I want to start drinking more water and you decide to like drink, I don't know, I don't know how many liters. Like if you just do it one day and that's it, it will not work for you. Like you have to do it slowly every single day, create a habit out of it because that will turn into over $10 million eventually, meaning that you will have this amazing habit that will impact your life positively in a lot of different ways. A great way to add micro shifts into your life is to plan micro adventures. Instead of waiting for the perfect vacation, just do something fun and small. Go to a flower market you've never been to before and ask the vendors about the flowers they sell. Visit a nearby town. Go to a new museum. Micro adventures are a great way to break free from the monotony of daily life because each of those little trips presents a chance to overcome challenges and obstacles, however small they may seem. And plus, they often result in memorable experiences that enrich your life and create lasting memories. Another approach you can try is doing a 30-day skill sprint where you'll be focusing intensely on learning a new skill every month. It's especially great for people who always want to try doing something new, try this, try that, like me for example, because I really like trying new things and I want to try so many different things. And when I only focus on, okay, I'm going to try this and this and that, I often don't follow through, you know? I try something once, twice, and then I move on to a new skill, for example. How a few months ago I decided to do pottery and I only attended one lesson, like literally one lesson. So when I decide to focus on one skill every single month, it helps me to actually learn something, but also allows me to feel like, okay, next month I can focus on something else if, you know, I decide that this skill doesn't interest me anymore. How last month my focus was rock climbing and actually after this first month, I absolutely fell in love with the sport and now I practice it more. Like I haven't actually stopped, I still do it regularly. I go to the rock climbing gym, I take classes, I watch YouTube videos because with the help of this challenge, I discovered a new thing that I really liked. This little challenge makes learning so exciting because if you think about it, in six months, you'll learn six new skills or at least you'll give them a try. And who knows, maybe you'll want to practice something regularly. So now let's move on to the homework portion of this video because I want to make sure you get the most out of everything you learned today. So when we talk about the self-discrepancy theory, what I really want you to do is create and reflect on your actual ought and ideal selves. Identify gaps and plan actions to reduce those discrepancies. Talking about your self-esteem, please give the daily sentence completion exercise a try. It's an amazing resource for you to reflect and build awareness. And also, don't forget to challenge negative thoughts with positive reframes. And when it comes to micro shifts, schedule and reflect on weekly micro adventures or maybe monthly micro adventures. What can you do to bring excitement back into your life and also commit to a 30-day skill sprint and document your progress and let me know in the comments what skill you decided to choose. If you're still watching this video right now, thank you so much and comment your favorite yellow emoji so that I could see who watches my videos up until the very end. Mine are these.
If you're thinking about what to watch next, I highly recommend checking out this video right here about the only productivity system that you will need. A lot of people think that they have to manage their time better, but it's actually not their time, it's their energy. So make sure to click right here and keep on watching.